Gravit, Arkansas, this is Shepherd's Chapel with Pastor Arnold Murray. Join with us now as Pastor Murray takes you on a book-by-book, chapter-by-chapter, line-by-line study of God's Word. Now, here is Pastor Murray. We ask our Father's wisdom and His presence as we study His Word in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I want to cover real quickly in summary the 37th chapter in as much as we were running so close on time. As I explained the acrostic, I want to recap it just briefly. The 37th Psalm, which we completed in the last lecture, is a psalm made up of a group of uh, quatrain um, stanzas, let's call them, with three sets of triplets out of 40 verses. The three triplets happen to fall equally spaced, one seven verses from the beginning, the last seven verses from the end, seven being spiritual completeness, with the third, the, the center triplet falling on verse 20, the center of the chapter. Your father, in this acrostic, and it is lead tight in the Hebrew manuscripts, unfortunately that's what we miss in the translations. The Companion Bible is one of the only Bibles I know of that carries forth the acrostics whereby the English reader can reap the rich rewards in understanding the hidden message to God's elect. So that sets aside verse 7, 20, and 34. The, the whole problem is this. Don't worry. Do you worry? Are you worried about the wicked getting ahead of you? That's what the psalm is about. Therefore, I, that's worthy of being repeated, the very acrostic itself. I'm going to read verses 7, 20, and 34 from the 37th Psalm. With that thought in mind, worry, trouble, and the evil overcoming you. Verse 7 in this acrostic reads, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Don't worry about him. Because of the man, Ish, who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Verse 20, to complete and to continue. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs, and they shall consume, into smoke shall they consume away. In other words, if you're roasting a lamb on a spit, when a, when a drop of the fat melted from him hits the hot coals, it there's a vapor, it's gone. That's what's going to happen to the wicked. That's why you don't have to fret about them. And then 34, to complete the acrostic, wait on the Lord and keep his way. Keep that path, Christ said. And he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. Do you understand why you don't have to? If it looks like they've got a little wealth, don't worry about it. You're going to own the whole world with your father. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt See it. That means you will be there. You won't read about it. You will observe it. You will witness it for our Father. How precious that 37th chapter. If you're one that tends to worry, it should become your favorite chapter. If you're one that gets anxious because of the wicked in the world, Father's in control. Okay, uh, the 38th Psalm, then, as we continue, is a prayer of and for further blessings in view of the 24th Psalm, remember the 24th followed the, the 23rd, of which 37 was in view of, and it was the, addressed the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, that is to say, Christ at the right hand of God, ruling forever. Looking forward to the blessing and the future before we complete this series uh, in these next um, Psalms of his return. Psalms 38, a Psalm of David, to bring to remembrance. In other words, don't you forget. Verse 1, O Lord, rebuke me not in thy wrath, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. Our Father is a consuming fire, and his displeasure is hot. 2, For thine arrows stick fast in me, and thy hand presseth me sore. You see, David was quite a sinner, as well as he was quite a king. And we see within this, that part of David, perhaps that wasn't too becoming. But then, do we not all have that part? And that's why Christ died on the cross, knowing that we are unable 
without repentance and without his forgiveness. Three, there is no soundness in my flesh because of thine anger, neither is there any rest in my bones because of my sin. And in a sense, when you put bones as the members and translate that to the end times and the many-membered body, we still have that thing. But praise God, he paid the price, and we have repentance. Always remember, as it's stated in that last psalm, he is under us. We, he holds us in his hand. Okay? Uh, verse 4. For mine iniquities, that's my sins, are gone over mine head. As an heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. I want you to picture in what this draws reference to in the Hebrew. Have you seen the porter, um, let's, let's say on a safari, how that he packs that load upon his head, and that's the way the bearers bear the burdens? He said, my sins are so heavy that as a porter, I can't hold them up anymore. And praise God, again, for repentance. Five, my wounds stink and are corrupt because of my foolishness. You know, David, uh, when you look at his activities, yes, even sexual, you can begin to understand, in part, what some of these wounds were. And I'm going to the literal now, but then look at the world today, if you would. They're festered. My very wounds are festered. Six, I am troubled. I'm wearied. I'm tired, is what he's saying. I am bowed down greatly. I go mourning all the day long. And this is probably one of the lowest times that you'll find David. Listen closely. Seven. I'm on an insert of thought. At the same time, you might note, he doesn't let it get him down. All right? I suppose what the Father wants you to see in this with Christ at the right hand, because this is written in view of Psalms 24 with the King of Kings sitting at the right hand of God, that even though you are chastened, even though you're corrected, don't let it get you down. That's part of the trip, friend. For my loins are filled with a loathsome disease, and there is no soundness in my flesh. How in the prophetic sense, with David being a prophet, as it is written in Acts chapter 2, this prophecy certainly fits age of the end times. It fits many other diseases. And I truly believe that's what this disease, it's a burning inflammation. Verse 8, I am feeble and sore broken. I have roared by reason of the disquietness of my heart. Nine, Lord, my desire, or better translated, perhaps my health, my health is before thee, and my groaning is not hid from thee. Lord, you see me suffering. Lord, you see me in this trouble. And when God looks down today at the many-membered body, do you think he sees perfection? No, he doesn't, beloved. He still loves us. But what you're going to find out, there's only one cure to some disease. And that's in him and his way. Ten. My heart panteth, it throbs my in my very it just it throbs, my strength faileth me. As for the light of my eyes, it also is gone from me. This means your vitals, his vital signs were weak. They were almost gone. He was if you would at the point of death, and yes, his eyes no longer mirrored his soul. They were dull, and at that point, 11, my lovers and my friends stand aloof uh, from my sore, my stroke, and my kinsmen stand afar off. Nobody wants anything to do with you when you get something like that. I'm not saying that's what David has had, but I'm saying it's an example of the many-numbered body in these end times. Nor can one blame one's friends. Also, in the spiritual sense, it works quite the contrary when you have the truth. But that isn't really what this refers to in its fullness. Twelve. They also that seek after my life lay snares for me, and they that seek my hurt speak mischievous things and imagine deceit all the day long. They tell lies about me. They try to set a 
a trap of deception for me. Have you ever had a day like this, friend? Forget about the de disease for a moment. Just, let's just take depression alone, for sometimes depression can make you feel actually this bad that you stink, that you're down, that nobody wants you, nobody loves me. God always loves you. Depression itself can do it to you. Is God correcting you in that? Well, I don't know. Only you could answer, but I'll tell you a real good way you can always find out is repentance from the throbbing heart. Don't try to con God. You might con some pastor, you might con some man, but don't play games with him. When you repent it, you pour you, when you repent, you pour your heart out. You empty the inequity out of yourself and come to him as a little child, clean, innocent, repentant, a willing servant. You might be surprised what he'll do for you. I know a lot of you wouldn't, but some of you might. Thirteen. But I, as a deaf man, heard not, and I was as a dumb man that openeth not his mouth. I want you to think, in a sense, in the couple of chapters, you're going to have this repeated. I want you to remember those also are practically the words of Christ before Pilate and part of the prophecy. 14. Thus I was as a man that heareth not, and in whose mouth are no reproofs. I didn't have an argument. Now he's down. That's low, friend. That is very low. But always remember this. The lesson that is taught from it. When you are that low, don't go all the way. Because did we not learn in the last lecture, and I suppose that's what you're supposed to absorb, is it doesn't matter if you fall. There's always going to be a hand under you before you hit rock bottom if you are in him. Do you know who that hand belongs to? Our Father. He's going to catch you. That's a promise from the living word. This is what I don't want you to ever leave off if you get depressed like that. 15. For in thee, O Lord, do I hope, not in man's flesh, not in man's weakness, not in man's sickness, not in man's depression, but in thee, O Lord, do I hope, thou will hear, O Lord my God, and he will. Hope is faith in this sense. Keep faith in your father. I don't care how low you get. 16. For I said, or I think, I said, hear me. Least, list, or else. Otherwise, they should rejoice over me. When my foot slippeth, they magnify themselves against me. And it's true. The enemy, when you go down, he moves in for the kill. But not, you don't have to worry about it. When you serve your father and have that kinship, a true kinship, not just a word, but kinship from a child to its father. 17. For I am ready to halt. It says, I I'm ready to fall. That's what it means. And my sorrow is continually before me. Got it there all the time. 18. For I will declare mine iniquity. What does that amount to? I will be sorry for my sin. You see, in a sense there, the double thought on repentance. Repentance does not mean, in the Greek sense, from the New Testament I'm drawing now, does not mean just to say, I'm sorry. It means also to have a change in the inner man or woman or child. A change from within, as well as being repentant, sorry for the things uh, that you have done. 19. But mine enemies are lively, and they are strong. And they that hate me wrongfully or falsely are multiplied. It seems that it grows and it grows. If you take the right stand and if you take the path of Christ, I assure you, 
Sooner or later, you're going to come to these odds if you accept the full truth, having eyes to see and ears to hear. Even as in his disease, we relate that to the spiritual. Your enemies are going to shun you. If you don't believe it, if you have eyes to see or ears to hear, run next door or somewhere and just really dump the truth out on them and see how unpopular you grow overnight. It doesn't take long. It wouldn't be long till perhaps, unless they have eyes to see and ears to hear, they won't even want you around. But that's all right. You have brothers and you have sisters. Most of all, you have a father and he has called you if you have eyes to see and ears to hear. Verse 20. They also that render evil for good are mine adversaries, because I follow the thing that good is. Always do. In view of verse 30, chapter 37, or Psalms 37 we just completed, a person would be quite foolish to do otherwise. 21. Forsake me not, O Lord, O my God, be not far from me. You remember Christ's words on the cross again in Psalms 22? You see what he's telling you? He's bringing you to the inner circle to let you know that even in maturity and hurt, in correction, he loves you. And though you are falling and though you're ready to fall, always have hope or faith in him. That makes Christianity a reality or you know you're not going to fall. Well, I might trip and fall. No. That's, that's lack of faith. You are not, I say not, going to fall. Your father, father promises his hand under you. Make haste, in verse 22, make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Don't ever forget where that salvation is. If I may, I'm going to just flip back real quickly to chapter 37, Psalms 37, and read that 24th verse. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. He's not going all the way to rock bottom. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. You can count on it. It's a promise from God. It's a promise from He who created the entire earth and the heavens. He's made that promise to you. you there, there can be no more power or a wish for no more love than to claim that promise. And every promise you claim of God becomes a, a, an automatic reality. What a comfort he is to his children that love him and that seek him through his word, for he is Christ, that is to say, is the word. You must absorb it, meditate upon it, and understand um, his word. We come to the last four psalms in this group of psalms and how wonderful they are. Psalm 39, to the chief musician, even to G. Dutham, a psalm of David. Judah, of course, means praised. Jedutan meaning praising. So, even to the praising, a psalm of David. This also was the name of a Levite who was, in a sense, the chief musician in charge of music. Therefore, this was one of the more difficult psalms to sing or to handle the music. That is to say, to direct. So be ready as we cover these next four psalms for the closing of the first creative books in psalm. I'll explain that at a later time. 39 verse 1, I said I will take heed uh, to my ways. I'm going to be careful that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. In other words, you don't cast your pearls before swine. When the enemy is around, use a little common sense. Well, you mean you wouldn't want all the people to know the truth? 
You bet your sweet little bippy I wouldn't want all the people to know the truth. God dealt in a little covert activity himself, according to some people we have in this nation. You would think otherwise. But those that go by God's plan are persecuted by those in power. Be ready for it. Expect it. But don't worry. God has the upper hand, and in him we have uh, the victory. So, yes, that's a teaching straight from God's word and straight from this psalm of love. Learn to bridle your tongue. What is the sin of the tongue? That's to speak while the wicked are present. Well, what are the wicked in the end times? Those that go against God. Well, who go against God? Well, let's, for the stupid, let's just be, let's be nice for a moment. Let's explain it to them. The ungodly are those, especially, let's look first on the national sense, or the nations that disallow God uh, in their system, or hope, or wish that they could. That means communism. When you're around them, keep your mouth shut. Bridle your tongue. Learn how to use a voice translator. That is to say, one that will have to be decoded. Don't cast your pearls before swine and, and certain congressmen, which all live in the same pen. Verse 2. I'm going to try to be nice now about this. And I think being in a pig pen is nice compared to hell. Verse 2. I was dumb with silence. I held my peace, even from good, and my sorrow was stirred. I was troubled about this. Now listen to the problem three. My heart was hot within me while I was musing. So while I was meditating. Now you sharpen up for me and you listen. While I was meditating, the fire burned. Then spake I with my tongue. And you listen to me. Your father is a consuming fire. God is a consuming fire. Hebrews chapter 12, last verse. Only the Holy Spirit can bring that hot, consuming fire that will touch your tongue and someday, as they spoke on Pentecost Day, a tongue that every uh, ear that heard it understood perfectly what was spoken, regardless of what language they understood. Not this garble and junk that you hear people rattling today. That's not what was spoken on Pentecost Day. I'm talking about the real article. The Holy Spirit speaking through men, not devils, not demons, not evil spirits. You see, it is God that touches your tongue and then you speak our consuming fire, the true Holy Spirit as it is written of in the book of Joel, verse 4. Lord, make me to know mine end. That's a, you know, that's a question so many people want to know. I don't think you would be too happy if you knew it. And the measure of my days, how many days am I going to live? Uh, what it is that I may know how frail I am, how short-lived I am. In other words, in a way, the thought I want you to grasp is that a man's lifetime to God is its nothing. Time means nothing to our Father. Verse 5. Behold, thou hast made my days as a hand breath. As, it, Father, it's, it, it's nothing in time to you. And mine age or my lifetime is as nothing before thee. Just a breath. Verily, Every man at his best state is altogether vanity. See, means pause, hesitate, think a moment, consider. Man in the flesh is nothing. And really, though we feel the pain, in part, some more, some less, in this flesh body, on this earth, in the unhealthy state that David described in the prior psalm, yet at the same time, what God is telling you here, hey, friend, 
It's just a short time anyway, short trip. Believe in me. Trust me. Therefore, we have the seed. Let's stop and think a moment on that. You got hurt. You got pain. Life here to our Father, He doesn't consider that He's putting us through a great deal. It may seem that way to you, but to Him, it doesn't, because He has the overall view. He's trying to save you, because you're His child, and He loves you. Sila always connects two thoughts or more. In this particular case, it connects the vanity described. In that fifth verse we just completed, man is nothing, he's empty. That's what it means, empty. With the explanation of it that follows uh, in verse 6. Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. When the wicked or the evil or whoever gathers up riches that are ill-gotten gains, he spends all of his life raking it in. He never knows who's going to end up with it. He might have a child that he gives it to, they inherit it, and he may lose it the next day. Seven. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. Hey, you can't go wrong there, friend. Put your faith in God, not in a heaped up pile of riches uh, waiting to, for the morning. There's nothing wrong with being wealthy in God's blessings. You understand? That is the blessings of God. But don't put your faith in it. Don't take your faith off God. It's nice to have financing. Nothing wrong with that. By that I mean to be financially well off. There's, it's a blessing. Don't ever apologize for it, especially, you know, if it's, if it's good games. Of course, mammon you'll gotten is, there's no way you can make it that way, but God's blessings upon you are beautiful. But always keep your hope and your faith in God. Hey, deliver me from all my transgressions, my sins. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. Nine, and a repeat of that word, that sentence, I was dumb. I opened not my mouth, because thou didst it. You see, who did it? He didn't speak. There's, there's a great deal in this, because God didn't tell him what to say. The Spirit didn't move on him. And until the true tongue comes, Keep your mouth shut. Because all wisdom comes from God. Studying God's word brings wisdom. That wisdom does not come from a book, but from he who spoke the words to the writer, the prophet, or whatever. All wisdom comes from God. Verse 10. Remove thy stroke away from me. Loosen my tongue. I am consumed by the blow of thine hand. This is a, we lose some here in the Hebrew. I can't allow that, beloved. The word blow should read conflict. I just can't let that stand. I am consumed by the conflict of thine hand. God doesn't strike you a blow with the hand in this sense. But his conflict, in which if you hear him, in which if your tongue is loose, you become a part of, all your time is consumed by doing his work and the work of his hand. Do you understand? That makes a considerable difference in that verse. I want to read it again, reading it correctly. Remove thy stroke away from me. I am consumed by the conflict of thine hand. I work full time. Eleven. When thou with rebukes dost correct man for iniquity, thou makest his beauty to consume away like a moth, like nothing. Surely every man is vanity. Selah. Stop. Think. Pause a moment. 
this particular sila connects the human vanity, that emptiness of man, with an abiding reality and divine um, uh, resources. How precious. And you know what that resource is? Let me tell you. It's prayer and hope in Yahweh. There is no other. Let's complete the chapter. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee and a sojourner as all my fathers were. This world is not our home. You got it? You understand? 13. Oh, spare me that I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. Well, we learn in the book of Hebrews that many had the vision and many had the faith, but they didn't see the promise. The promise came 2,000 years ago approximately, and the promise is available to all, yes, even those of this time. That is the prayer. That is the promise. There is divine intervention for those that wish to partake of it. Your Father will intervene. He will hear you when you want to be heard, when your hope and your faith is in Him. And you know He is a reality. Don't go to Him if you're not, if you're playing games, all right? Don't go to Him. You'll find out what a stroke He is, all right? Go to him and open your heart to him like a child does to a father. He wants to hear from you. Bless your heart. You listen a moment. I want to share something with you. Well, beloved, I want to share with you the Companion Bible. Of all Bibles, I recommend this as a study Bible. You know, we have the King James, and it's a beautiful work. Here's the King James with a parallel column. Leather bound, and in the back of this wonderful Bible, you have 198 appendixes, appendix taking you into 198 in-depth studies. Now, as an example, Genesis. Uh, now we go to the front of the, the companion Bible. In Genesis, uh, you see eight verses, and then you see explanation in the column. Beloved, you as an English reader, it takes you back into the Hebrew allowing you to see and understand that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, period. That millions of years passed. For in verse 2, Tuhu yes, you the English reader can read the Hebrew from the manuscripts showing you how that the world became void and without form, not that it was created void and without form. A Bible that any English reader can easily understand. You see it there on your screen. I hope you can make that out. Tuhu Babuhu. It became waste. So here you have a study tool that takes you from the milk and puts you into dead center meat. Um, and how precious it is to have those tools available, including Masara, including, um, uh, including those appendix that go into so much depth, so much truth. We just thank our Father for this beautiful Bible. It is yours for a donation of $100 to the chapel to help you study deeper, more depth into God's Word. Okay, bless your heart. $100 gift in the Bible. We just want to send it to you. God bless you. Soul and Spirit. Cutting asunder the soul and spirit. What is able to do this? Our Father's Word, as it is written in Hebrews chapter 4. But there's a great deal more in-depth truth concerning this. Every individual should be able to understand from our Father's Word the soul and spirit. Soul and spirit number two, taking you even deeper yet into the study of God's Word. Learn about your inner being, your self your very spirit and soul. Uh, I think that this will be very comforting to you and strengthen your foundation in Christ. Dualism in man. Man many times has difficulty in understanding himself. Man is a dual being when in the flesh body, for he has the spiritual man within and the flesh without. Uh, 
Learn what our Father's Word has to say to help you cope. Uh, Elijah, that great prophet that God promised he would return to us before that great day of the Lord. Just before that great day of the Lord, that prophet that would turn the hearts of the children back to the Father's plural. Learn from this tape what is meant by that statement. Uh, the last trumpet, an in-depth study concerning the seventh and the last trumpet. This creates a synchronization between the, our gathering back to Christ. One of the most important subjects to man today, especially in the generation that no doubt it will come to pass, the millennium. The millennium age, that age that, which in, means 1,000 years of teaching, the priest of Christ teaching with him. Be familiar with it. You may have a destiny, and your purpose might be to be that priest in the millennium. All right, bless your hearts. There we are back again. And bless your hearts. I don't want you to think I was picking on anybody. You know, I said we all. I include myself in this. You know, we were discussing here in the studio while you all were away that just being a member of this hemisphere, this nation, Canada, south of the board, we got so much to be thankful for there to thank you for that it's where would you start? There's your 800 number, 1-800-643-4645. In this great state of Arkansas, 787-6026. Father, these special prayer requests and these that are praying at home, we love you and we thank you, Father. We appreciate all the blessings that you have poured out for us. And may we take the strength from you and the faith to cease worry and to improve our um, mind into thinking positive into thy work and enough to say Father we love you for your blessings on every man, woman and child in this nation, in this hemisphere touch me, guide heal you in Jesus precious name thank you Father alright, Claudia from California uh, the tape forgiveness is the best of your best, it is incredible well thank you, I that was from the heart, because I was having trouble forgiving a person when I did that study, and it released me also. I appreciate that. I've listened to the elect and keynote a hundred tapes a hundred times, but forgiveness has opened my eyes. All right. Thank you for that report. Don from Oregon. During the millennium, it says that we will keep the feast days. Everyone will. Are we to keep them today? Don, read Colossians chapter 2, and uh, you will understand. In the first place, the sacrifices, the offerings. He wants your love now. And that's what will be the oblation during the millennium. Marie from Florida. When it says the dead shall rise first, and then them that are alive and remain, does it mean that, that these that died aren't with him? Are they asleep in the ground or what? Now, come on, Marie. Go back to First Thessalonians where you read this in, um, in chapter 4 and go back to the subject. The subject is, Jesus, uh, Paul is saying, I don't want you to be like the heathen who think that Christ is still in the ground. Because... If you think Christ is still in the ground and has not risen, 1 Corinthians 15, we're wasting our time being Christians. But he says, even as Christ rose, so have those that are, that are with him and in him. He's their children. I mean, they're his children, rather. They go back to the Father. And naturally, the dead rise first. But that doesn't mean... In the end, that means when they die, they're gone first because we're still here. They're already gone, and they're all with him. Ezra chapter 2, second Ezra rather, chapter 7, verse 77, will tell you even what they're doing there, both those that overcame and those that didn't. Gene from Pennsylvania. In Ezekiel 14, 18, is this the false woman prophesying about the flyaway rapture theory? You got it. 
God is very displeased with those that teach his, the souls of his children to fly to save their souls. It's an abomination. And it's too bad that people can't understand the word of God and the simplicity in which it's written. If they want to be deceived by Satan, it appears. I know they don't. I know they've been misled. Okay, we enjoy the teaching very much. Thank you, Gene. It's good to have you with us. Mary from Illinois. Will Adam and Eve or Cain and Abel be resurrected back to the earth? Well, I would be judging God if that were the case. I mean, I would be playing God if I were to do that. I don't, when Christ written taught after his crucifixion, I don't know if they accepted him or not. If they did, they won't be back. I speak of that that is written in the first Peter chapter 3, about verse 18. James from California. Please explain the verse in Matthew about the one being taken from the field and the other one is left. A friend of mine said that this was another proof about the rapture. Well, Jane, you want to be real careful because your friend has just told you that she's going to receive the mark of the beast. You know why? The first woman taken in the field is taken by Antichrist. That's the whole message is that Christ is warning that the Antichrist will be here first. That the Antichrist is coming. And some will be taken by him rather than staying doing the work of the true Christ to witness with the Holy Spirit through them. All right? We got a little noise in this room. I wish it'd be knocked off a little bit. Okay. Monique from Pennsylvania. Is the reason Elijah didn't die is so that he can return in the end times? That's exactly right. Absolutely. Okay, Mildred from Texas. Are people who have not accepted Christ in this life going to come back to be taught in the millennium? God is judge, and only he can tell. So, uh, who knows? Uh, it's his business, and we can trust him. Okay, Anne from California. Why is it Everything happens to some people and nothing happens to others. Are some closer to God or what? Well, God knows again. There are some things, when you just say a blank statement like that, when you say something happens, many times God leads people, opens doors and closes them, and sometimes people think that's bad in their lives, but not necessarily so. We must discipline ourselves to follow his lead prayerfully, uh, okay? And then, who knows? Sometimes maybe something doesn't happen to anyone a whole lot because God doesn't care about them, all right? In other words, uh, he doesn't have any need for them. Teresa from Arizona. Do the two witnesses come before Antichrist? And the answer to that is yes. Since they turn the hearts of the, their fathers, does this mean a lot of people will listen to them? Well, Elijah will turn the hearts of the children back to the Father, as it is written in Malachi, the closing verses. The two witnesses will be here first because they are their time is given in days, which means solar, where Satan's is night, and the days are ten days longer they will have. Okay, uh, Clara May, or Carl May, from California. For those of us widows who are on a fixed income, what will happen to our income during the one world reign? Will we not get it if we don't worship him? You stop that worrying. All right? What about the ravens? God's in control and you're his servant and you think he's going to let something happen to you? Would you consider showing all the documentaries you've made during one of the third weeks that you're off so we can take those uh, we haven't had? Uh, just got a new VCR. Uh, okay. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll sure take that into consideration. And um, uh, I don't know if we're going to get the one ready for this month or not. We're working on it, but um, it's, there is so much involved and so much interpreting that uh, we haven't decided fully yet, and uh, so we may have a time to record some of them in this next week coming up. Debbie from New Jersey, when Christ returns, will he still have his scars? 
As he returns, so shall you see him return. Acts chapter 1. Richard from California. Why is the millennium a thousand years? Seems like an awful long time just to teach people the truth. Or will there be other things going on? There will be other things going on because after they are taught the truth, they're not going to just be old. They're not going to overcome. They're going to be tested. And if they come up short, they're going to fall when Satan is released. So a little time must go by so that they have a chance to be tempted. Okay, Deb from California. Can someone who has eyes to see not know they have an evil spirit in them? Um, if someone has eyes to see, well, it's possible. Many times when someone slips and falls, they do not recognize what it is that brings about the fall. They in California. How can all the dead be in heaven? Well, that's uh, because that's the way it is. Again, read uh, Second Ezra. And some might say, well, how do I know that's really part of the Bible? Because the Masala includes it. Brenda from Maryland. I've always had dreams of demons, and I have uh, learned to ask Jesus to come into the dreams. But I still have them. What can this be? Well, uh, maybe you're watching too many spook movies, or eating sour pickles, you know, sour pickle dreams. I, uh, you need to order the tape on dreams and visions, the senses of the body, and what causes some of them. Walter from California. In Isaiah 59, 19, what is that standard that shall be lifted against him? Is it referring to Amos 8, 11, the true word of God will be lifted up? In terms, well, it was, it's Christ, yes, and the standard is when we walk and when we march as Christian soldiers, that's what it is, you bet. James from California, could you tell how a trans... Relation compares to transliteration, or how they differ. When you transliterate a word, you simply change the letters from one alphabet to another. Alphabets are not languages. They simply give the reader of that alphabet the ability to pronounce the sound or the meaning. meaning. But to fully translate, you translate the meaning as well as the alphabet. In other words, the word Moses, if you were to fully translate it from, rather than transliterate it from the Hebrew, rather than saying Moses, you would say drawn from the water. That's a full translation. GR from Texas. Do we have a name for the, do, for the world that was? Yep, the first world age. Second Peter chapter 3 gives us all three of them. Uh, the companion appendix 88 shows the block plan of all the oblation 60 square miles. I thought Levi's and Priest were the same. Also, who occupies the prince's portion? That is, who are the prince? Well, there are three offices of the Godhead, and the Savior is the prince as well as the Savior's, um, David is the Prince of Israel, also. Mabel from California. I think the crew and Pastor Murray, I'm going to start tithing to the chapel. Well, thank you. The family, uh, everywhere that hears the word will appreciate that. I am an artist, and I need to know where it speaks of not being tricked by Antichrist and about us still being in our flesh bodies when he is here. Well, and you listen the next, you keep listening to this teaching of Luke, and you'll find it Luke, when we get to the 21st chapter. You heard a pretty good part of it tonight. Or in Mark 13, or, or Matthew 24. Uh, Harold from Oregon. When the Bible speaks of mighty men, men of renown, does this speak of the world that was? Uh, you are my hero. Well, uh, let's let the Father be our hero, but and let's just enjoy His word. Men of renown means uh, usually it speaks of giants. Yes, the giants are their fathers. Mark from California. 
Will God be, that, be able to commit the unpardonable sin when delivered up to Satan? For instance, if they are addicts or alcoholics, it could happen if you could be tempted. That's why it's very wise at this time to come away from those things. You know, you get the flesh hooked on heroin or even the judge. And though you know it's Antichrist, and there's no way that Satan could tempt you. That old flesh is pretty weak, and it might get a big shake and fit going for you, and you might give in just to have a fix. It's not a good position to be in. Ian from Idaho, would you give us more current events and how they relate to Bible prophecy? How long do you think Gorbachev will stay in office? Well, these next three days, or two days, are going to be interesting for him as they move to establish the new presidency, it would seem he got drew a lot of flack today. But I think he's there for quite some time to come. And uh, how interesting it is as we see this move forward into the one world peace system. My friends, that's the sign, one of the strongest signs of the end of the time. You all better watch. Don't miss the next lecture concerning Watchmen. I read from West Virginia, Matthew 20, verse 16. If he calls you and you do the best you can, will you be chosen? All of us should do the best we can. We all fall short. We all mess up every once in a while. But that's just because we're flesh, all right? We can't help it. But when you do it in his name, he accounts it as perfect. You get, with Christ, you get an A plus every time, all right? You bet you are. Tim from Pennsylvania, 1 Corinthians 14, 35, 34, and 35. Can a woman preach the word, or does she have to stay silent? Tim, it states very clearly in the final generation that both the sons and the daughters will speak, prophesy, teach. And uh, so it is. Tom from South Dakota, we really appreciate the teaching so much. Uh, we have a dish and watch all day. Well, great. Concerning the Trinity, there are several references in the Bible where Jesus makes reference to his Father and a separate in it of a example also where he, which, it, which says Christ will be at the right hand of God. Please explain. Tom, there's only one way. A wise man does not try to explain the Trinity. He does it as Christ did. Christ taught three offices, the Father, the Savior, and the Holy Spirit. Those are three offices of the same God, our Father, the God, Yahweh. Chuck from California, what is religious view of astral projection? Have you read about it, out-of-body experiences? Is this a devil's trick to make us believe there is not a heaven or hell? Well, we have a lot of voodoo, witchcraft, and demon possession that have a great deal to do with out-of-body experiences as well as drugs. But there are out-of-body experiences and the transition of death that are very real. Milo from Minnesota. I heard you say that more people will be saved during the millennium than any other time. Are these people that have never heard one bit of the word or some other people? All of them that didn't make it because they did not have a teacher or were deceived or blinded. God himself sent the spirit of stupor upon the majority of them. Mentally, they're going to be taught before he judges them, and that would be very unfair, and our Father is very fair. Okay, uh, Catalina Katrina, rather, from Michigan. Are we allowed to eat pork by biblical law? And the answer is no. But that does not... Eating pork is, um, will make you sick. A lot of disease is carried by pork. Of the swine you shall not eat. It is written. But it is not a sin that will cause you to go to hell. It's just a sin that can, over a long period of time, make you very unhealthy. Okay, bless your hearts. We're out of time again. It seems this whole hour just flies right by. And we're brought to you by your tithes and your offerings. If we have taught you, if it has upgraded your life, if it's been a blessing to your life, then help us to be a blessing to others where you do lay those treasures up.
that are eternal. Christ says, hey, I'll claim you and profess you before my Father and, yes, even the angels. Uh, stay in his word and understand his word. It is such a blessing and such a gift to be able to discern the events that are happening at this time. How do you learn those things? From his word. May we stay in his word rather than the word of men. Every day in his word is a beautiful day. You know why? Jesus is the living word.